You're still watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa, the government of fake news. There's a video of the Lekki Toolgate massacre on the 20th of October 2020, wherein someone asked, how many people soldier wants to kill you? as men carried a body past their army personnel who had surrounded the protesters. But till now, there's still denials of the Lekki massacre. For some, it's the use of the word massacre. Too dead, as described by Governor Sonwolu of Lagos State, is not a massacre, they say. Should there even be one dead? Should we use ammunition at all on people waving the Nigerian flag and singing the national anthem? The army claims to have been stoned by some of the protesters. If that's true, do you fire live ammunition in exchange for stones? Was the army at war? Some others ask, where are the bodies? <laughs> Regardless of the number of people declared missing since that day, eyewitness claims of the army taking away bodies, and even the investigations of the CNN that showed a dead man whose brother is still looking for his body, government supporters are still asking traumatized citizenry for bodies. Why aren't they asking the army? The Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed, said the CNN's report was fake news, but he didn't tell us what had happened at the Lekki toll gates, aside from sticking to the army's story at the time, that only blank bullets were used. General Tai, who representing the Nigerian army at the Lagos State Judiciary Panel of Inquiry, has now said they had both live ammunition and blanks. He claimed General Burtai asked that the army trainees be used as the army was stretched. Are we sure these young recruits know the difference between blanks and live ammunition? I just they ask who. There are pictures and videos of the dead and wounded. If you search hashtag Lekki Massacre on social media, as much as there were errors in information dissemination on that night, in the last 30 days, wheat has been sifted from chaff. I think government officials get carried away by the powers of their offices and forget that they're employees of the citizens. If they want to pay boss, they ought to resign to their private businesses, not public service. They begged for votes. They knew all Nigeria's problems under President Jonathan and promised to turn Nigeria to El Dorado. But now, they treat the people with disdain. The Minister of Information didn't deem it fit to organize a press conference to tell the people what happened at Lekki Toolgate, or the government doesn't owe us an explanation. Regardless of the investigations done by Premium Times showing bodies floating in the Lagos Lagoon and several accounts of eyewitnesses who also implicated police officers from the Maracor police station, the minister stayed quiet. While the minister mentioned DJ Switch would be discredited, there were other people who did live videos as the incident happened. Those videos are still available. The accounts of eyewitnesses remain the same. It's the government's position that keeps changing. Who then is the purveyor of fake news? I implore the government, both federal and state, to stop playing their hostage. Don't be the politician who claims Nigeria is safe, then get kidnapped and killed by abductors. What goes around definitely does come back around. What goes around comes, comes around. around. Um, you know, when this kidnapping started and we're warning them, look, security, they'll tell you, no, it's foreigners that are being kidnapped. When Boko Haram started and we said, look, you need to speak up, they say, oh, no, it's against Christians. But today, even governors are being uh, attacked. Yep. Even uh, commissioners are being killed, police commissioners. Sitting, seven political commissioners are being kidnapped. Very soon, you hear that a governor was kidnapped. <laughs> I'm Absolutely. telling you. They tried. And, they, and so, they tried. Governor and, Zulum, three times. Okay, so... And that's why government needs to come clean on all of, most of these issues. I had expected, oh, yes, um, we land people, we are killed, but um, we are investigating and we ensure that, you know, whoever is culpable is brought to book. But this idea of today you say, no, the army didn't go there. Hmm. Then later you admitted the army came. Um, they they didn't go. Bullets. No, they didn't go with guns. Uh, but no, <laughs> they came with guns. 
but they didn't fire. Mm -hmm. Then later they fired, mm -hmm. but it was blank. No, later they no, came with live. Uh, live bullets, but they didn't use them. Very soon you will hear that, yes, at some point they used life, but you know, it was on the ground, they fired, not in the air. <laughs> you, know, at, you, you see, when you do things like this, before you know it, whatever you say, mm. you know, becomes, people will take it with a pinch of salt. True. Even those that used to believe who say, ah, no, no, it's not the Nigerian government. They should spare us all of this mm. detail because security is for everybody, not only me. Mm. It won't affect only me. Mm -hmm. It will affect their children. True. It will affect um, them, them yeah, also. Yeah. You don't sit down here and say Nigeria education is okay and then you send your children abroad. Yep. Mm. With the, with the way the account. federal government is going about this, I think I, we will get to a point where they will say there was no protest, there was no shooting, there was nothing. <laughs> and then they want us to take that. Because if you look at the way the government have handled this issue, even when the international media, I think they still believe that the Nigerian youths are just the way they used to be in the past. They yeah. don't know that the Nigerian youths are no longer Nigerian citizens only. Yeah. We are now global citizens yeah. operating from all over the planet. Yeah. So you can no longer you know, shut down anybody. It's, it's a borderless it's no longer, yeah, matter. The, the era of servitude, the era of uh, shutting down people, is gone forever. Mm. And the government should know that society has evolved. True. That whatever they did on that day was recorded. And yeah. they are being confronted with it. Even the international community, have been, they are confronting them with it. And they should accept it and take responsibilities and, and do I, the right thing. Yeah, and I think uh, the, what, what the federal government is doing is wasting too much time on this NSAS protest and you know treating it as it they should. There are other security matters. There are other matters begging to be to be to but, be but treasure. to be looked at. But they're just getting so unnecessarily fixated. Agree to what has happened. Move on. Do what the need for and move on. No, you're going this way. That is actually the way to go. Let's be able to firm up on exactly what happened on that day. Apologies to be made. Somebody did wrong to be punished. Um, these are the errors in judgment that were made, so we don't repeat it any longer. And then we can move on. But we have a history of not solving this problem. 1971-72 was Kunle Adekweju. It had to do with a cafeteria protest in the in University of Ibadan. Mm. That gentleman was killed. Nobody was punished for that incident. 1978 yeah. was the Ali Must Go. Someone was shot at, 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 at Unilag. And he, he died. Nothing happened till today. We had the Zaki Biam, we had the OD, we had all these things. There is a pattern to them, and they never get resolved. We must fix this particular one. I think that the Minister of Information responded to CNN to say that they were fake news because they knew that the international media's exposure of what happened was going to affect them personally as politicians. Martins E.J. writes on the last advocacy on Abia State. What's the difference between OKZ Ikpeazu and former governor of Imo State, Rochas Okorocha, are the same people? On the advocacy on Ukwani land being in need, Pontus Olise Jesse writes, hmm, I just pray something urgently is done about it because we have endured enough. For coming out on behalf of Ukwani community, I say thank you, Big Bros, Evans. <laughs> Up next, Evans is back to Kwani. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>